In today's video, we're taking a look at the NHL waiver wire. We have some key injury updates to some big players, and we also have some trade talk looking at teams like the Sabres, the Wild, the Ducks, the Coyotes, and more. We'll jump into all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a variety of news today. Let's start with the news from the NHL waiver wire. We found out today that the Carolina Hurricanes have placed defenseman Jake Gardner on waivers. Of course, Jake Gardner, uh, largely known for his long tenure that he was in the Toronto Maple Leafs organization, certainly a polarizing figure, always a good skater, good puck mover, but certainly known for his defensive blunders, especially in his Leaf tenure at some really... Not so opportune times, I guess, as most people will likely remember. But overall, though, somebody's still, you know, regarded as a good NHL defenseman who can help put up points on the board. But things in Carolina haven't really worked out. Of course, he left the Leafs organization as an unrestricted free agent. Uh, he was one of those players a lot of us, I thought, really would thought would have signed fairly quick after becoming a free agent. But he took a long time to hold out and get a contract he was happy with. Ended up going to Carolina. And like I said, they've, they've got a pretty deep blue line there, and things just haven't really worked out for the best. So now he finds himself on the waiver wire. I would think that because of his contract, he likely doesn't get claimed, but you never know. There are teams out there always looking for defensive help, especially ahead of the playoffs. You can never have too many healthy bodies back there. So I guess we'll find out at noon Eastern time tomorrow if uh, Gardner's time in Carolina is over or if he clears and ends up getting reassigned. Uh, do either their taxi squad or they could assign him to the minors, but I would assume he'll likely remain on the uh, the NHL side of things with the taxi squad if possible. Now onto the injury updates. We have some pretty key guys that could be out in extended time, which is not good to see. Jack Eichel could be out for the rest of the season. I mean, the Sabres captain, as we know, uh, seemed to have been dealing with something. We knew he wasn't 100%, wasn't quite right. Uh, obviously, he had not been scoring a lot this year. Um, certainly was getting a decent amount of assists and was playing okay, but you could tell something wasn't quite right. And then finally, he sat out to be able to go check things out with doctors and now what we're hearing is that it's like a cervical spine issue so essentially a neck is injury and he could be out we're hearing around eight weeks but if you take a look at the calendar there's not a lot of time left really in the nhl season we're a month away from the trade deadline and about two months away from the playoffs so eight weeks essentially finishes his season and if the sabers are going to be out of the playoffs there's really no need for him to rush back if he's going to you know maybe come back and play a game or two at the end Probably doesn't really make sense to do that. Let him heal and recover from this serious injury, um, depending on what exactly needs to be done to help him get better. So, obviously, that's a, that's a serious thing. And, obviously, the Sabres are having a frustrating season. So, we might have seen the last of Jack Eichel for this year. Of course, could that mean that he's played his last game as a Sabre? It's anything is possible. But, like I've said before, and I'll continue to reiterate, I do not see Jack Eichel being traded out of Buffalo unless he personally requested. At least that would be my take on things, but we'll find out as, as due time here how long he stays with the Sabres. Now, the other big injury was Islanders captain Anders Lee, who we don't really know exactly how long he's going to be out. Uh, he's out there listing him as an indefinite period of time after uh, sustaining a lower body injury, like a leg injury, after a collision with Pavel Zaka of the New Jersey Devils. Um, it's another unfortunate situation. I mean, we know Lee's a pretty tough customer. Uh, so for him to be out long term, you know it's a pretty serious thing. Uh, the Islanders are in a situation where they're a really strong defensive team. They get good goaltending. Timely scoring, but not really an offensive juggernaut by any means. And with one of their top goal scorers now on the sidelines for an extended time, you have to wonder what Lou Lamarillo might be thinking about how to handle this. I mean, we know the Islanders, like many teams, don't have a ton of um, you know cap space to really play with here. It would have to be a situation where if Lee was going to be out for the rest of the season, they could use long-term injury reserve uh, to maybe... Uh, bump up what they can afford here, maybe bring in a player in that way, but we don't know the extent of Lee's injury. I don't see Lou and Barry Trotz being the type of guys that are going to panic over this. Uh, I think they can continue to play well, even in Lee's absence. Uh, so we'll see, but if it turns out he's going to be out 
for the rest of the season, for example, that probably would be the only scenario I see with Lou going out to uh, try to replace him. But I would not be surprised if the Islanders are active near the deadline trying to make an addition. We know Lou Lamarillo sometimes isn't the most active. We haven't seen him do that a lot with this Islanders group since he's been the GM there. Um, but I think they're pretty confident in their group this year. And we've seen in the past when Lou thinks he can win the Stanley Cup, he tends to go for it and is a little bit more aggressive. So we'll see in the coming weeks here how they approach the deadline. Now, speaking of the deadline, we're a month away, and obviously teams are trying to finalize plans here. And as we talked about before, I would not be surprised to see some of the Canadian teams make their moves here probably as early as the next week to 10 days, given the fact that they have still a two-week quarantine period in place for players entering Canada from the United States. Now, the Canadian teams are still pushing the federal government to make an exception to that, where they can either quarantine, I mean, ideally not at all would be great, but, I mean, at least maybe a seven-day window or maybe looking for an exception if they've already received their vaccine for COVID-19 in the U.S. But right now, the government hasn't provided any answers. So until they do, they have to assume status quo and be prepared for 14 days. So uh, that could certainly impact what we see out of the Canadian teams. Uh, like I said, I would not be surprised if we saw more activity sooner than later so they can get ahead of it because of that but the players we're going to be looking at here today are all players on american teams but could be heading to canadian teams that are certainly showing interest now a couple of goaltenders that likely could find themselves on the move no guarantees here of course but some uh, really good options for teams looking to solidify things either as a number two number three guy like we've got anti ranta with the coyotes obviously right now the coyotes are still trying to push for that last playoff spot in their division darcy kemper's been injured so i don't suspect ranta to be on the move too soon uh, they'll probably take a wait and see approach as we get closer to the deadline. If the Coyotes really get to the point where they fall too far out of the playoff picture or if Kemper is back and ready to go, that could certainly change their mind there. Uh, but Rorant has a pending unrestricted free agent. He would be a good pickup. I'm really not sure that we're going to see him return to the Coyotes organization after the season anyways. Um, so I would think that because of their cap space that they're probably going to want to have a cheaper number two option between the pipes because as long as Darcy Kemper there and healthy he will be the starter there's no doubt ranch is a great goalie but he's been a guy that's you know often gets uh, injured a lot and is in and out for you know for long stretches that way so certainly you know if he's in a better role where he's not relied upon so much would certainly probably be better for him but we'll see but rant is a guy that teams could look certainly look to to solidify the goaltending same goes for jonathan bernier with the detroit red wings considering how Tough of a season the Red Wings are having. Bernier's numbers are actually pretty decent. He's given them some good goaltending minutes between the pipes. Another guy who very well could not find himself returning to Detroit next season. Could find himself on the move if he wants to continue his NHL career. So again, another guy who's been around the league a long time, has a lot of experience, and could very well be a good option, especially for like a number three in the case of Bernier. I'm not sure there'd be too many teams looking for to put him in a number two spot, but you know, if you if you're backup goalie or your starting goalie were to get hurt in the playoffs and you have to turn to your taxi squad to uh, give yourself some playing minutes, you want some experience there if you can help it. And a lot of teams don't have that. I mean, look at the Washington Capitals, prime example. They do have Craig Anderson, but word is that the uh, Caps are looking to add an experienced goaltender along with him on that taxi squad in, in case they don't get what they need out of Samsonov or Venacek. So we had mentioned before David Riddick maybe being an option, but with the head coaching change in Calgary, uh, I mean, I, if they do trade a guy like Riddick, it would be last minute because they're going to push right up to the last second here to see if they can get themselves in a playoff spot uh, so i think it's less likely we see that whereas the coyotes and teams like the red wings who we already know are out of it then they would be more likely to maybe make a move sooner uh, and a guy like bernier could find himself on the go there's apparently enough interest and buzz around him around the league that those are two veteran goalies who could find himself on the move here now of course another piece in buffalo that's interesting and elliot friedman's brought this up on some uh, local radio and tv hits recently talking about sam reinhardt now not to say that the sabers definitely want to trade him or anything like that but there is a lot of interest in him is what he's saying so he wonders how the sabers are going to approach this deadline and how they're going to feel about sam reinhardt being a part of the team's future uh for the longer term here whether that's with or without jack eichel is what he's been saying because he doesn't really know what the future holds 
hold for Jack Eichel and the whole Sabres team. I mean, they've been through so much and so much disappointment that you wonder how much change are we going to see in Buffalo. You would think that the significant overhaul is likely coming here, given how poorly this year has gone. I would think that we're probably going to see a new head coach next season, and we could see a fair bit of turnover on our roster. At least that would be my gut instinct for what it's going to take to fix this team. Uh, but if they ended up trading Eichel, they might as well trade Reinhardt as well, because obviously that's a signal that they're going to be doing a complete teardown and starting fresh here. And even though they're both good players, um, you know they're kind of at that point of the, their career where they're starting to enter their prime years, uh, obviously making bigger money, and it might not make sense for them to keep them. But uh, in the case of Reinhardt, there's certainly lots of interest. If a team comes calling with a good enough offer, Buffalo's certainly listening. It'll be interesting to see how they decide to handle him. Obviously, he's going to need a new contract soon. It won't be long before he's entering his UFA years as well. So his next deal is likely going to be a little more expensive given the fact he's actually having a good season on a bad team. Now, a few defensemen as well to keep your eye on would include Josh Manson of the Anaheim Ducks, for example. I mean, Manson's name was in trade rumors before, but hasn't really been talked about a lot this year given the fact he's been out uh, with, due to injury for a substantial period of time. He's been limited to only six games, but certainly the Ducks as a team that we've talked about uh, that are re retooling or rebuilding. I'm not sure what you want to call it in, in Anaheim just yet, but Bob Murray's willing to move out a lot of the veteran guys. He mentioned that Getzlaff was only going to be a player who gets traded if he wants it, but other players like Danton Hine and Adam Henrique has been out there as well in the trade rumor mill. Ricard Raquel, we've talked about teams like the Leafs and the Oilers being interested in Raquel uh, and amongst others as well. Uh, and even on the blue line, we wondered if a guy like Lindholm or even a guy like Manson would be traded, but of course, due to injuries right now, it seems like Manson's the more likely scenario, but Really, we've seen the injured defensemen be traded before the deadline as well. Look at Sammy Votnin last year. You know, if the team feels that they're going to be ready to play come playoff time, then that's really the main thing they're concerned about. And obviously, Manson comes with what I feel to be a pretty decent contract, and he's not a pending UFA, so it's something they could have on their roster for a year or two. But as I mentioned when I'm talking about like Matthias Eckholm and other defensemen, a lot of teams are not only looking at this year, but they have to be cognizant of the expansion draft in the summer. So obviously, if they already have three really good defensemen that they want to protect, uh, then adding Manson into the mix, or it'll be Ekholm or another guy that has a contract beyond the current season, might prove to be problematic because, yeah, there's great for this year, but once the offseason hits, they could turn around and lose that player or another solid defenseman off their team due to not being able to protect them all. So it's certainly poses a potential issue there. So we'll have to see. But Manson's name is out there. It is getting some buzz, uh, especially for a right shot guy with some good size and mobility. I would think that there is a good possibility Manson could be moved as well. And he is certainly working his way up a lot of the trade bait boards around places that are keeping track of that as well. And the other defenseman I want to talk about today, which I do think is less likely to be moved, is Minnesota Wild defenseman Matt Dumba. Of course, I do think there's a pretty good chance he's not a member of the Wild for next year, but I think there's a pretty good chance that Bill Guerin might wait, and this might be a trade we see either at the NHL draft or during the offseason, given a couple of things. One, Minnesota's winning more hockey games than we ever expected this year. They're a better team. Largely due to a young rookie, uh, Kaprizov, who's been amazing for them, scored lots of goals, had a hat-trick the other night. Um, so he's been uh, making this team actually fun to watch again and more entertaining than they've been in a long time. So they're in the mix, and they're not going to want to subtract from a team who could go to the playoffs when they can deal with this at the draft or the offseason when teams might have more cap flexibility anyway. So even though Matt Dumba is a player very likely to be moved sometime here in the near future, um, it's likely a situation, in my opinion at least, that given a $6 million cap hit, that it's something that we don't see ahead of the deadline. Even though at the beginning of the year we thought maybe they would, because we didn't expect Minnesota to be in the spot that they are now. But given the fact that they are, that does change things for Bill Guerin. And like I said, I'm not sure he's going to get that big offer he's looking for anyway. They really need a top six center Iceman in return in a Dumba trade. And teams are not going to be parting with that right now unless they're way out of the playoffs. And that's just going to be difficult to do. But if he gets the right offer, like if a team came calling, like Calgary and Salford up Sean Monaghan or, you know, something along those lines that he could get a top six center that he was really happy with, he would pull the trigger now. But there's only a handful of teams that would be even considering uh, doing that. And really, I don't think we're going to see that, that caliber of player moved at the deadline here. So I think Dumba's name is one we see weight 
until the draft or possibly even later into the free agency. But clearly, he's not going to be a while, I don't think, next year. They've already got a full no-move clause on their three other defensemen that are signed long-term and Captain Jared Spurgeon, Suter, and then, of course, uh, one of Dumba's good buddies in Brodeen. So uh, I do think he gets moved, but I think they wait. So let me know your thoughts on all the latest injuries as well as the trade rumors discussed today, and we'll discuss further down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello.